basically what happened is that I have two cousins that play soccer for their school and their club. So while watching them, uh, we came to kind of conclusion that they need a lot of footworks and competence and confidence with the ball. That's something that I'm specialized in. That is my program provides. So we worked with them as much as we could once a week, twice a week. And they had the desire as well as the commitment to learn as well. So within the time frame, they got better. And then after that, people noticed that. And then, hey, where are you getting your training? How come you got better within a month or two? What happened in between? And that's the part that everything started. And it then became word of mouth and people started to call and email and all of that. And we started our business. We don't look at it typically as a business. We look at it as a program that what we can provide for other kids, players, individuals, groups, or teams, that we can help them. Uh, how to get confidence and self-awareness that they have a lot of capabilities as long as they keep the work and as long as they put the work in. So that's the part that it started, basically. Cool. So what, what age ranges do you, do you coach? We have the youngest one, we have seven. And then we all this one, we have a college players. So from seven years old up to the college players. Uh, right now, as of now, the, the, the program basically works around individuals and groups and also teams. Uh, we don't just go with the teams because of a lot of coaches from different clubs that reach out. Can you work with them? Can you work on their foot skills? Can you work with their competence with the ball? And but most of the program is uh, surrounded by individuals and small groups. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's uh, what's your favorite age group to work with? It's hard to say. It's hard to say because if I say one age rather than the other one, I think it's not fair for any of them. But I think it's more of that what we can do for each age group. The younger ones, when they come to your program, they look for the first interaction is always that's the interesting part because they don't know you, you don't know them. So you try to make sure that connection comes first. Uh, but one of the things that I always mention is the trust. And that's the 30 seconds, I would say 20 seconds of the time that I need and they need as well. If they trust you and we trust them that they do their part and they trust you that you're there to help them, not because of the, the hours they just don't want to spend, and the hours, they're just going to go in there and come back home. Um, so I think it's there. So uh, the challenging part is that that's the first connection you're going to have. Because if that connection is not there, then it's going to be a little bit difficult if the child wants to be or not. So the way we run it is a little bit differently. It's, it's, um, so when we come to more in, in the questions in, in, in along the side, I can explain more as well, but I don't have a preference of, okay, I have a seven years old or I have a 19 years old that I prefer. No, it's more about what I can do for each individual. Perfect. So tell us a bit about your business then. Do you guys specialize on one-on-one -on -one training or is it more groups? The program, the base of the program, the fundamentals of the program, it's about ball skills and ball mastery and the technique first. So that's what we try to specialize in. It doesn't mean that the tactical part, the formation part and all of that is not there. It is there. We try to make sure that the players that come to us, they get to a level that when they get the ball, they don't just have to release it depending on situation. They don't just have to pass it because someone said so. I have the ball. What can I do with the ball? Can I use my skills? Now, Within the sessions that we go, after a couple of while, let's say five, six, seven sessions, uh, we encourage parents to, to video their kids. And then can we watch them together? So if in case when we watch it together, I says, okay, you had the ball. Why you didn't take it one-on-one? -on -one? Because I'm afraid I'm going to lose the ball. I'm afraid I'm going to do the mistake. So we have to go back a little bit to look at their mindset. What is holding you up to do your stuff? So if in case you're coming to the program and then you're building on these skills, why we're not applying? Mm -hmm. So we have to understand those parts as well. It's just, the program is not just because of someone wants to come and get better with their foot skills. 
It's more about understanding each child, each player, each individual for what we can do. And I always refer to, I have five fingers in this situation. None of them looks the same. It's mine. So if I have five players, none of them think the same way. None of them receive the message the same way. None of them understand the same way. Some of them by demo, some of them by sign language, some of them by showing, some of them by drawing. So I have to understand each of them. How can I send a message that they can receive it the way they're comfortable, but it makes sense to them. So we try to make sure the program is not just about the skills and footwork, which is which we, we try to be specialized in, but more of that, what we can do for these kids and the players uh, to get better with the ball. Uh, and, and I think that's the one thing is missing a lot is uh, I try to make time and see the games as well from a different perspective. And I see a lot of, with all my respect, the coaches is that everyone's saying pass, pass, shoot, kick. We're sending a lot of messages within the time frame of the game, which is they don't have that time, time to think. Can we give them time and break to decide what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and then we can, you know, correct them on that scenario. But to shortcut answer your question, well, no, a program is specialized more on the foot skills, technique, and ball mastery more than tactical part. Love, love that. So what, what would you say it does a good, high-quality training session look like? So what, what should be included? The, the first thing we do is that as far as including the, when the players come to us with the level of higher level is that the intensity has to be there. So you're going to bring the game situation into the practice as well. And we try to do it when I say differently that we try to come with the questions. For example, I use you as an example. If Leo comes to my session and we do certain things, if he or she is a midfielder, attacker, striker, defender, uh, depending on age and the level they play, then we try to look at it. Okay, you're in this scenario. What you could do? Where you could go? How would you lose your defender? How would you use your body shape? So we try to make sure that the game situation is coming to the practice, but also ask questions. Don't do it because I said so. Don't do it because someone said, and you go from this cone to that cone, give me a pass, move the ball and all of that. And one of the piece we try to make sure that the players understand regardless of the age, is other than the first touch is a scanning, space awareness. Why are you passing to me? Why are you going to your left? Why are you going to your right? So the intensity is one. The second thing is that understanding the game and scenarios that happens within the practice, uh, the repetition of it, how we can make sure the game scenario and the repetition is high level, the intensity with intensity, and uh, the players are on their toes, not flat footed, and make sure that everything that go through within their understanding, it has to make sense to them. So which is every time we do a session, we come with the question, does it make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And if in case she or he says yes, then we have to test it. Then we bring a different scenario. Now does it make sense? Uh, no. Why not? Because of this. Okay, so let's repeat it in a different way. So we try to make sure the intensity is one, developing the part that they understand it, and then we take it from there and then keep it challenging. Because I think sometimes if we try to make it complex, it looks pretty from outside. But from inside, it doesn't make sense to them. They're just repeating what you've been told to them. But it doesn't make sense. I'm repeating what the coach told me. But do you understand it? Nope. So what we can do? So... Let's break it down to phases. Phase one, phase two, phase three. Now can we combine all together? Yeah. So we try to make it that way. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely agree with you. Sometimes when I when I go to the park and I see coaches with with like loads of equipment, and right. then I look at the, the player that they're training and the, the player just looks confused about what to do. So the session looks right. amazing. Right. But there's no end goal. And the player is a, doesn't seem to be learning anything. No, but you have to look at it from the perspective of the player because sometimes we forget that we, we have to go back and see the players from their lenses, not from our lenses. So you have to look at it, the body language as well. Uh, the other thing is that 
the complexity of the game, which sometimes is, the, the simple is better, but it doesn't mean the footwork cannot go pretty and nice and all of that. I mean, look at some, someone said one time, we need it to be more simple, simple. But simple in a way is fine. But on the other hand, if the player can do, let's say, Ronaldo, can do Neymar, can do um, Modric move, can do Zidane move, those are well known. If they can do it, let them do it. Mm -hmm. Let them have it. But they have to understand when, how, and why versus just doing it. So the, the training could be, depending on the level, depending on the age they play, could be structures and non-structures. Structures means, okay, I put the cones, you get better at it, then can I remove the cones? Now can you do it without? Now can I bring a little bit of interference, 50% challenge? Now can I bring 100% challenge? So I think when you develop kids at either of the age group or level, you have to make sure what age you have, what level you have, and what's the desire or the goal and where we can put them after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love. So what do you look for when you bring on a new client into your program? Well, th the way we do it, again, like I said, is a little bit different. We, we don't accept players just to go on the website or just to email and they want to come to the practice. Mm -hmm. We do evaluation. So the players and the parents, they come to the program uh, they have to do evaluation for 30, 40 minutes, uh, depending on age, regardless of the age and regardless of the skill level, they come to us and we, okay, why you want to come to me? Mm -hmm. Why you want to come to this program? I say, I want to get better. Why you want to get better? Because I want to better play for better team. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on age group, do you have a Snapchat? Yes. Do you have Instagram? Yes. Do you have TikTok? Yes. How many hours you spend on it? Then you look at the parents, they shake their head, <laughs> they look at the players. So what I see is that if you come want to come to program and spend time and then waste your time here, and then the money that the investment, the parents comes. So you need to give me 10 minutes at home. If you are willing to give me 10 minutes at home, which is I'll test you. So after four or five sessions, if I see that you're not improving, I'll ask you, do you do your homework? And I said, no, I don't have time. That's an excuse. So if you don't commit to it, why are you coming here? So I want to make sure that the players know that, that, hey, if I want to go to this program or this academy or this training, um, I need to be committed. I don't want you to be perfect, which is I, I usually don't use this word, hate, but I dislike perfect. Why? Because as soon as if someone is perfectionist, if something doesn't go the way they want, the mind have a trigger. I'm doing something wrong. Well, you're not doing something wrong, but I want you to progress every time. So if you give me 10 minutes at home, after five days, you spend 50 minutes with the ball. After two weeks, 100 minutes. So you're getting better 100 minutes each week, each two weeks. And then I can progress it. I can give you challenges. I can take it to the next level. But if you're not doing that at home and you're just coming here, spending hour, and after a week you're coming for another hour, then I don't see that desire. So don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. So That's if, the way we do it. If there's a, a client that isn't doing the training at home, do you have a policy right. that they get released from your program or, or how does it work? How do you keep them accountable? We try to give them, let's say, a three strikes. Mm -hmm. The first one is that why is not happening? Because we have to look at it, the children or the kids or the players at the background. There are things that we don't see. There are things that we don't hear. Yeah. So can we see if in case they can share something with us if they're allowed or one? Two is that do they feel free? So I go back to one thing that I said at the beginning, the trust. If they trust you that you're there for their benefit, short term or long term, they will make sure that you get the information and they trust you because you tell you want the best for them. So when we ask them, what's going on, for example, and then they say, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm tired. I'm doing this activity. I'm doing that activity. I'm coming here. I don't have the desire. I'm coming right after the school. I didn't eat. So then I go back. It's not the child. So then I go to parent. Okay. I need to change his hours or her hours. 
Because if Pinkish is coming from school and she or he doesn't have the desire, that means she or he is tired. Mm -hmm. So I need to change that a little bit. The second thing is that if the player comes and then after three, four sessions and I don't see the desire, and I say, for example, Lexi, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't know. So when we see the body language, then I'll try to talk to them in a way that, do you want to be here? Do you have this, that? Do you think this is what you, you want? And then they say, nope. What do you like? I like basketball. I like tennis. So why you don't like this one? I don't know. My mom is making me. My dad is making me to do this. Then we have to go back again to that part that if in case they don't have the desire, if I'm forcing that training, and if I don't take that energy, that intensity, then I have to stop and see what's going on. So I think sometimes we, in the transition, we lose that. We just want someone to come and we train them and we just, they just go. But we have to look back. It's a human being we're dealing with, especially yeah. if it's a kid. So we have to look at it, what we can do. So sometimes we need to stop, take a break, and see if in case we can go back and then if they have the desire to come back. Mm -hmm. But um, so I try to think about the things that what is going on behind so I can help them. Mm -hmm. And some other times that you have to look at it because I don't teach, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a club, I'm not a school or, or, or college. So some of these kids that they go to a club and all of that, they come back and they said, okay, what's going on? My coach yelling at me, I hate this sport. Everyone wants this, everyone wants that. So we have to go back and try to give them support. Hey, that's okay. I know it's hard. Let's see what we can do. Because um, I think with the club levels, sometimes, unfortunately, we we'll lose the transition that, hey, we're still dealing with kids. What we can do to help them to get confidence, confidence with themselves and also what they can provide and how we can do the sessions that will be fun, but also uh, developing them as well. Mm -hmm. Love that. So let me take you back, Mo, when you first started your business then. Sure. What, what was your biggest obstacle you faced? The obstacle, I think, uh, this is probably most of the uh, majority of the, the, the individual trainings or private trainings or sessions they start. It's, it's a field mm -hmm. that uh, we don't have the exact field or because of the weather, we had to cancel and all of that. Yeah. That being part of it. But uh, I would say that within a couple of one to three months, uh, because of these situation we try to make sure we have an indoor sport 365. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to cancel. We don't have to do all of that. Um, the other obstacle was like, um, I would say this is from my side, not from anyone else out or the environment, mm -hmm. is that the way we wanted to do it, we wanted to do it a little bit differently. We will make sure that every player that comes to us have that commitment, wanting and desire to do this, yeah. spending time at home as well so at the beginning it was tough because now we're trying to say hey try to make sure to come to the program with the intention to get better not just come here and kick a ball and go and then forget about it for another week and then come kick a ball and go so that was the obstacle because when we started we didn't have that much of climb but when the people that came and got much better then the word came out and word went out so as of now I have 378 players. Wow. I rejected 59. Mm -hmm. Do you see that amount every week? We start usually, our program will start from 3 o'clock up to 10 o'clock at night, every day. So this was, for last year, seven days a week. On the weekends, we start usually 6 o'clock in the morning up to 12, 1, 2 in the afternoon. And then I need a little bit of break to spend time with the family. But <laughs> other than that, no, it was every day, 3 o'clock up to 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And usual time, every hour players or every hour group or every hour. So individual group, individual group. The, the thing was the hard time is that you have to manage. And I think this is the message probably I'm going to send out 
if you're trying to coach young players, each individual have different skills. So I would say that plan ahead, know who you're coaching, make sure that the sessions that you're doing is to that level. Fun is one part. Make sure that they understand it. So I'll try to make sure every player that comes, every session is ready, for whom is ready, what did we do last week, what we're we trying to accomplish, and what's the goal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. So where, where do you see private training going, Mo, in the next two to five years then? I think it is going to expand. I think right now a lot of parents, a lot of uh, young players, a lot of players that have goals to get to a little bit higher level or maybe pro, they understand that they have to do a little bit of more work other than club or school or colleges. They have to work with individuals or groups that they can give them a little bit of more um, skill level, the ball control, the ball confidence and confidence and then go back to the club as well. So I think this program or individual training uh, is growing and I think it's going to grow much, much more as well. Mm -hmm. So how how did you get your first uh, client then when you first started? Was word of mouth. Was word of mouth. Still we're doing word of mouth. We don't advertise. We don't put flyers or stickers or websites or even on Instagram. We don't do that much of advertise. It's all word of mouth because right now we have players from probably every single club around, every single school around, and some of the colleges as well. So everything that every player that we have... uh, I would say statistically, every player we have, they brought three players back. Mm-hmm. So it's all word of mouth right now. Love that. So where, where do you see your business in the next five years from, from now then? It's a question that I think uh, it, it loses a little bit in transition because a lot of people say, well, uh, five years, I want to grow and I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, I would say I will take it step by step. I would say it every week, every month, and try to see. And I think one of the things is that I try to do is that I need to develop myself first. Mm. I'll try to read. I try to read, uh, listen to podcasts, books, webinars. I spend between fifteen hundred. I'll give you the numbers there, to three thousand every year, just to get classes, get the webinars, talk to some people, and try to make sure that I can learn from everyone. Learning could be from a seven years old. Could be from a seven years old, could be from a young player who just started, could be from a mom or dad, could be from anyone. So I think the obstacle is that for me is I'm not looking at the five years. I'm looking at every month. What can I do to help myself to get better so I can help each individual so that way the program grows as well within the time frame as well. But in the long term, the goal is within the years is to make sure that every kid, every player, individual comes to the program, uh, leaves with the competence, confidence with the ball, and have that self-trust, self-awareness. Because we're trying to, I've tried to say that I'm not coaching a player for a game. I'm trying to coach a player, individual for life. Mm-hmm. Because at one time in their in life, journey those cleats gonna go away so what can i do to put that self-confidence that if you do the hard work and if you do your part you're gonna accomplish it's just a matter of time Mm -hmm. love that so my last question for you then and this one's a a personal one Uh, it's a two-part question so the first one is what does failure mean to you and the second one is how important is taking risks in business? I love that question. A lot of kids, a lot of individuals, even us and as an adult, we think as a failure, we or mistakes uh, in general, that we're not good at it and we should give up. Or if in case I failed at something, that means, okay, I need to change that. But I think about failure or mistake, we have to look at it. It's you're trying something. If it didn't work, what do you can do? So always I refer to that as a math. Two plus two is four. Three plus one is four. Five minus four, one is four. 10 minus six is four. 
result. We want to get better. We want to win. How? Find it. Something didn't work. Change it. Don't change your goal. Don't give up. Don't let anyone tell you, no, you cannot do it. As long as you put the hard work, change the way that you play. If you play this way, it didn't work. What can you do after that? If you're not good at your left, you're not failing. You just have to try to practice on your left, vice versa, right foot. The second question as far as, I forgot the second question as far as all right. <laughs> so how important you, is taking risks in business? Well, it all depends uh, because uh, I think that sometimes in life you have to take the risk. Sometimes in life, in case you just want to play safe and it says, I'm waiting for the perfect moment or perfect scenario, or I don't have this or I don't have that. It doesn't happen. Sometimes you just have to take the risk and go for it because uh, the more calculated risk, the better. But sometimes uh, you just have to have the belief in what you want to do. And that's a part that I appreciate you asking that question that when you're starting this program, any program, you have to make sure if you believe in what you're doing, that you're going to help somebody else to get better. Not because you want to just business or make money on all of that. If you believe in what you do and you know it's going to pay in the long term helping someone, try to do it. At the beginning, you might not have the field or you might not have the client. Go with one. Start with one. And then slowly when that he or she gets better, you get the second, you get the third. But believe in what you want to do and believe in what you want to do is helping someone else. Don't just do it because it's pretty or nice or I'm going to have this, I'm going to have tournaments. No. Help one and then step by step help the second, the third. But if you believe in what you do with all intention, then you mean care about the players. If the player needs you off the field, make sure you put the time. If the player needs you because mindset, especially teenagers, you have to help them. It's not about a skill. For example, if, if Lexi, I use that name a lot, comes to you and says, Coach Mo, I need to talk to you. I said, Lexi, I'm busy today. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I think that's a little bit of failure from my side because mm -hmm. if she needs me I'll make sure I put the time and effort even I just have to drive for one hour and see her let me see what she wants because then you're putting in her mind that okay there's always someone can trust me and I can help get the help because we sometimes we try to um, not put the time afterwards so I think if you believe in what you do and you can help take the risk and try to do as much as you can and just look forward. Look forward to do that and learn from past. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Love, love those answers. And Mo, I just want to well, thank you again for coming on, sharing your, your journey, your story, and giving us My a little pleasure. bit of an insight into, into your business. So if anyone is watching or listening and wants to either get in contact with you or follow your, your program, what's the best way to do so? My pleasure. Thank you for you taking time and talking to me as well. Uh, the, the first thing I would say, if in case anyone to get in touch, Instagram right now will be the best option. Email as well on the website. There's an email. Uh, reach out to me. And if any of the coaches or anyone wants to start a program, and needs help as far as the guidance uh, from A to Z, uh, license, how to take a facility, where to go, anything that I can help, please reach out and I'll make sure I can give you uh, all the experience that I got for past few years to building my business. And right now, actually, we're, we're in process to take another space as well, which is quality around 8,000, 9,000 square feet. So if you need any kind of support, any kind of help, and you want to start your business as far as the coaching, please feel free to reach out and I'll do my best to help you. Love that. That's perfect. Excellent. All right, Mo. Well, thanks again. Wish you all the best and good luck with the my other pleasure. facility that you have coming up. My pleasure. Thank you for taking time. All right. Take care.